Hi everyone, I haven't introduced myself to everyone yet. I'm Amy Kennedy. I'm a nursery inspector with the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. We affectionately call ourselves MDARD because we like acronyms because we're the government and there's lots of acronyms coming but I will explain them all. Uh, I'm very glad to be here and talk to farmers markets and market masters about just Michigan's laws in general just so you're kind of aware of the overview of where we where MDARD is in the, in the group and what we're doing for invasive species. So to review, you might already know this, invasive species is something that's not native, whose introduction causes harm or is likely to or could cause harm to Michigan, either our economy, our environment, or to human health. And a lot of invasive species were actually introduced on purpose, like gypsy moth was introduced for silk production, and then it kind of went crazy and causes all sorts of damage even to this day. And uh, a lot of things are introduced on accident, say zebra mussels that came in ballast water, and uh, they just kind of come here and there's no natural enemies and they go crazy and they just cause a lot of devastation to our environment and our economy. Um, there are three groups within the state that handle invasive species. Uh, the first is the DNR, the natural resources. They cover everything that lives here naturally uh, in Michigan, uh, forests, wildlife, fisheries. So uh, they manage those populations as best they can. The Eagle, it used to be called DEQ, it's now known as Eagle, Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. They manage our waters, our groundwater, uh, freshwater, lakes, and streams. Um, and they, uh, they manage invasive species in, um, in water, like aquatic plants. But um, I'm an MDARD, and we regulate agriculture businesses. All businesses that sell, cultivate plants or animals uh, sell them, any business, any industry, and our relationship is the DNR manages forests and they want to maintain forest health and we have a pest called hemlock woolly adelgid, but they can't regulate any the trees that come in out of the state or firewood or, for, or uh, lumber that comes in and out of the state, MDARD does. So our role is really the regulation of the industries that could potentially harm our forests, our wildlife. Uh, think of bovine tuberculosis and deer, chronic wasting disease, um, water, fertilizer in Lake Erie, the al algae blooms in Lake Erie. Um, so MDARD really regulates the industry, the fertilizer industry and the plant industry and the nursery industry that, that could affect invasives in our, in our natural environment. And I'm from MDARD. We have several divisions. We have ag development, which covers um, uh, grants and proposals to increase agriculture in the state of Michigan, both processing and, and you know, just acreage of fields, acreage of field crops, of fruits and vegetables, of, of uh, dairy, of be, uh, beef cattle and stuff. The animal industry dis division covers uh, mainly uh, diseases uh, for animals. They're really, really big into bovine tuberculosis right now, both in deer and our dairy herds. Environmental stewardship obviously covers our environment, uh, conservation districts, um, and drain commissions and the such. Our executive office covers emergency preparedness uh, in terms of a lot of these diseases and invasive species, and also a lot of our legal assistance is in our exec office. Food and Dairy Division is probably the one you guys are most familiar with. It covers anyone who manufactures food. So whether it's baking cookies, making jams and jellies, up to big producers like Better Made chips, uh, um, canning facilities, anything that has to do with food, people food, and our Dairy Division obviously deals with dairy products. Uh, the Lab Division handles all the analysis, uh, testing for all these various diseases. Uh, they also house our uh, Metrology Division, the weights and measures, and like gas gas stations and such. I'm sorry, I'm going through kind of big picture first, you know, DNR, Eagle, MDARD, and then MDARD has all these divisions. Um, like I said, I'm in pesticide and plant pest management, so I'm not the one who will come and check food. I won't check, you know, the cookies, the jams, the jellies, and stuff like that. Um, within 3PM, we have different sections. We cover animal feed, um, manufacturers, and, and the products themselves, and we take samples regularly to make sure it meets protein, fat, and fiber, guaranteed analysis. We cover fertilizer as well, the same thing. We have a lot of manufacturers, a lot of ag dealers, especially in the thumb, uh, that mix their own fertilizer. Yes? A animal feed, including like pet treats? Pet food, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all pet treats, have, uh, the manufacturer has to have a license with the state of Michigan. Right, yeah, and and the inspection that. rate, as far as animal pet treats, it kind of depends on their, you know, if they're doing raw ingredients, if they're doing, you know, where, where they're doing it. If they're doing a home sure. kitchen, it's, a, it's like an every other year inspection, a pretty basic. But if it's, a, if it's like a facility, it's a license, yeah. Correct. It's a different so license, yeah. You need a you need an animal feed license. license. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had to address that a few times. Yep, yep. 
So fertilizer, the same. Fruit and vegetables, we have a, a section that handles basically grading fruits and vegetables. So apples, if you want to ship to certain states, you want to grade A, grade, or grade, I think it's by size. And also for canning purposes, you might need to grade things. Or if you want to ship out of the state or out of the country, uh, they assess that, the grading. Uh, we have a pesticide section. They handle anyone who, um, obviously pesticides themselves, make sure they're licensed and they're, but mainly uh, that they're being applied safely. That all businesses that do it as part of their business have a business license and that uh, all the applicators, all the individuals who are applying it have a certification. And then there, we cover plants and plant products, and that's the part, that's the section I am in. So we cover obviously plants, tree shrubs and perennials grown at greenhouses, but we also cover plant products, which includes lumber, it includes firewood, it includes seeds, it includes um, decorative products such as wreaths made out of natural materials, grapevine wreaths. Yeah, exactly. Bittersweet. <laughs> exactly. That's why I brought it up to say, you know, we, we do regulate uh, boxwood wreaths to not this past winter, the winter before we found boxwood wreaths that had uh, boxwood blight, a disease on it. So it's they're cut little. There's not live boxwood and little cut pieces that were just twined around into a wreath. But the, the, the leaves had a disease. And I imagine someone tacking it in the front door. The dead leaves fall. The winds blow. They blow in your boxwoods. It can spread a disease. So our section is the one that, that handles plants, not just plant, live plants, but also plant products such as wreaths. So that's the Act, Act 189. Of, it was originally written in 1931. It regulates nursery stock. And nursery stock means hardy plants that can survive a Michigan winter. So I just wanted to kind of differentiate between perennials and annuals because I know people get them mixed up all the time, and I did too for a long time too. So perennials uh, are plants that come back every year. It includes hostas, daylilies, irises, daisies, a lot of things like that. Um, some ferns, a lot of ferns do come back, but um, nursery stock also includes trees. So even little bitty trees, I found someone at a market that was selling little maple seedlings like this tall, but uh, that's a tree, so it's regulated as nursery stock, and it does, the size of the plant doesn't matter. Shrubs, perennials, and bulbs, and seeds. Uh, annuals, though, are not included in this law, and they're not regulated. And so annual plants are ones that die in the winter, ones that can't survive the Michigan winter. So think of hanging baskets, flats of flowers, house plants. So if you have vendors that are strictly selling those, they do not need a license, they do not need an inspection. But if your vendor, most vendors, a lot of them t might sell a few. They might have a few daylilies or a few perennials, a few shrubs or a few little tree seedlings they may have dug up or grown. So if they have just a few perennials, it would, it would mean they're selling nursery stock and they would need to be licensed. Here are the type of nursery licenses, and you had talked about this. So we have a grower license or a small grower license. That's anyone who's propagating their own plants, keeping them over the winter, holding them in a greenhouse, kind of gr grow, you know, to, to increase in size or quality. A uh, small grower license, we, we just offer a discount, uh, really, for anyone who's selling. Is it, the requirement is under a quarter acre of field stock or under 200 square feet of greenhouse table space. So it's really quite small. There's a lot of people who might do it from their, just their home garden, you know, just dig out, divide their daylilies every year, divide their hostas. There aren't a ton of greenhouses that qualify for the small grower license, but we do, we do offer us a lower price for that. And there are two types of dealer licenses, the nursery dealer license and a registered dealer license. And the different nursery dealer license means you can basically resell or re-wholesale, re retail plants that you, don't, you didn't grow yourself. Any kind of plant, trees, shrubs, perennials from anywhere in the country the registered dealer license, again, we offer the discount because you are agreeing to only resell plants that were grown in Michigan 100%. So going to Bordines or Wiegands, I'm trying to think of other ones in the west side, uh, Christiansons, they do not only sell plants that they grow on their property. They grow t thousands and thousands of plants, but they also bring some in from other states. So you could not qualify for a registered dealer license. Um, I would tell you guys, I, would, I love that you're requiring a license to sell nursery stock. I mean, because that is the state law and that you're you know, requiring that of your growers or of your vendors. Um, I would not worry yourself with which type they have exactly. Like that's really for us to figure out. I mean, you can call me for sure and say, I think he's not grow. You know, he's got this and I don't think I'm happy to look into that for you. But I wouldn't. I just want to explain that we have all these different types, but I do not intend for you to have to keep up with them or be able to tell a difference. And then the bottom line really goes over what you had asked about what type of license is needed. You just need a license for every location where you are selling plants at a given time. So if you only go to farmers, if you never sell from your house, let's say someone has a greenhouse in the backyard and you ne they never sell from their house, they just go to farmer's markets, three different farmer's markets during the week, but never on the same day. They only need one license. 
But that says they can go license needed for each look oh, simultaneous of sale. simultaneous yeah. sale. You know, so if they're not, if they're only selling at your market on Saturdays, another one on Tuesdays, another one on Thursdays, one license, it, the license will go with them from location to location. But if you're selling only one location at a time, though, if you're selling, someone's at home, your wife's at home selling, you know, your daughter's at home selling plants too, then you would need a separate license for, for that location. That's how we we have been interpreting the the law is that one locate you know it does it covers you a grower license a lot of people have a grower license that covers everything you grow and anything you might buy and resell as well at one location at one given time um, inspection requirements I just want to bring this up here so you know that we are inspecting growers and dealers uh, this has nothing you don't need to you know check that some the plants have been inspected but we do nursery growers we inspect annually and there's the fees we charge by the acre it's written into the law even though a lot of please if you have a greenhouse it's kind of hard to figure out the acreage of that uh, nursery dealers uh, typically get an inspection every other year of their nurse of their plants and of their invoices we look at where they're getting their plants from if they're getting uh, say hemlocks from Ohio we will make sure that they're coming in with the right certificates for the hemlock quarantine we have several quarantines in the state um, so we do look at not just the plants, but also their invoice as well. So again, I, other than checking for if you want to make sure their plants are inspected, everything is supposed to come with a certificate of inspection. But again, I wouldn't really worry, worry yourselves with the details of the inspection. But I just want you to know that we are inspecting both plants and their invoices and their paperwork to see if they're coming from a risky area. I want to talk a bit about prohibited plants. We have what's called an NREPA list. Again, I told you we like acronyms. NREPA, Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act has a list of prohibited and restricted plants. This is a small image. There's copies in the back of this, and I know Erica will go over it as well. Most of these lists, the plants in this list are aquatic plants, and these are prohibited and restricted. You cannot sell these plants in the state of Michigan. Some of them you can't move any plant part. Not, not, you say, oh, well, it's, it's, just, it's just a cut flower. It's just a cut whatever. Any part of the plant cannot be moved. I highlighted the terrestrial plants, uh, Japanese knotweed, is a common one I see quite a bit for sale. People think Michigan, it's Michigan bamboo, it makes a great screen, I like it, I, hate, I don't like my neighbors, I'm gonna plant it to block them, uh, but it's, it's a prohib it's prohibited plant, so it cannot be sold or moved. And at the bottom, there's purple loosestrife and phragmites, which are kind of a little bit of aquatic, a little bit of terrestrial. Um, and those are ones you might, purple loosestrife is a beautiful perennial, it's a beautiful little, you know, it's beautiful purple flowers, so it's something you might see in your market, someone selling. In Phragmites, uh, the seed heads of the really tall grass could be used in some, in decorations. So again, I didn't want to go over, I know Erica's going to go over these, some of these a little bit more, but I just want to say we, we are the agency that regulates, or that covers this regulation, so this is a lot of what I'm looking for. I'm going to talk about what I'll look over, if I visit your market, which I have in the past year, um, first of all, I, I introduce myself to the market master and to vendors who are selling because I, I think introducing myself is always important, getting, you know, making contacts, getting to know people. And then in the future, hopefully they'll come to me with questions. You know, I might not see, there might not even be problems then, but they're like, you know, I saw this guy selling blah, blah, blah. You know, they, they'll come to me and help, help us out with these invasive species problems. If I'm wandering around the market and I see someone selling nursery stock, trees, shrubs, perennials, or bulbs, I look if their name isn't on the front of their their stand. I'll say, what's you know what what are your, what's the name of your business and do you have a license? Um, most in almost all cases they are licensed. If not, I hand them a license application. We talk about it. You know, I can I have a receipt book. I can collect the money and get them licensed right there in the spot. Um, I also while I'm walking around, I check for those NREPA prohibited plant species. I check for Japanese knotweed and uh, purple loosestrife and uh, phragmites mostly. Uh, and aquatic plants, if people are selling aquatic plants, I ask for identification of those plants. Um, I give educational handouts, which I have copies of, grower and dealer handouts. Every time I do a grower inspection or dealer inspection, we have a set of handouts that we give to them, and I always give them to market masters, or at least offer them as well, just so you're familiar with what, what we kind of ask or what we're you know, asking of our dealer, of our licensed people, so you know what we're, expe what we're expecting. And I also offer it to vendors as well, and we have forest pest alerts as well about the the forest pests that were really were hemlock willy delgid, spotted lanternfly and such. Um, but really compliance is the goal of my visit every time. It's not, we're not collecting a ton of money. You saw our license fees are extremely low. We're not out to make, this is not a money making business having me come out on a Saturday. No one's making money off this. It's really compliance and education and getting the word out there so people don't think, or people are just more educated and know. I shared a story about uh, frog bit is a, is a plant Erica will talk about and 
I was kayaking up north. This was many years ago. And I'm like, this is the cutest little plant. It would look so cute in my pond. Um, and, but I didn't know better. And I, I did not take it. I, did, I didn't move it. Um, but it's, it's a prohibited plant. It's on the list on the, the one before. But w without education, people don't know that. They think it's cute. They think it's pretty. They think it makes a good hedge. It makes a good screen. It has a pretty purple flower. There are a lot of reasons people might want to try to sell something. And it's, never, it's almost never for malicious reasons. It's almost always for innocent movement or sales of these plants. So the more education, the more outreach we can get, the more compliance we can get, the more, the more we can stop the spread of these, these uh, invasive species. So I'll open myself up to questions. And like I said, as a grower packet and dealer packet, I left at the back. It's, they're kind of a real boring read, but it's a great resource to have if you have one copy of it and you can always look to it. It does have the NREPA plant list in it. I left some nursery license applications back there. Again, not that you need to license anyone, but just so you kind of know what is expected or what, what, we are, what the state asks, what the law asks. Uh, the district map, I have a map of, colorful map of Michigan at your seat, and that shows who covers each county. There is gonna be a shift this coming spring though. Um, four counties are gonna need, need to be kind of shifted around. But I will tell you that all of my coworkers are very, very nice people. So if you call someone and it's not their district, they will, they'll kindly, oh, Amy's handling this county now or this area now, Tom is handling it and they'll give you their, their info. So even though it's current as of right now, it, it, it will be changing just so you know. And my business cards are in the back as well. But if you have any questions or want additional copies or electronic copies or any of the handouts, I'm, I'd be happy to email them to you. Well, thank you for your time. Grab my card, give me an email or call anytime. Thank you. Thank you.